Ever wanted to enjoy kakigori or shaved ice Japanese style at a festival in Japan? If so, make sure to watch this video through to the end so you can learn how to make Japanese style kakigori at home using just a handful of ingredients. If we haven't met before, my name is Pat Tokuyama, creator of the Japanese Cooking Club and All Day I Eat Like a Shark, where I help people learn how to cook Japanese food. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing for more Japanese cooking videos just like this one today. Today what we're going to be doing is kicking things off with some of my favorite foods from omatsuri or festivals. That's the Japanese term for festival and we're going to be covering all the different types of foods that you may encounter at a festival or omatsuri in Japan. At least the kind that you can actually recreate at home in your kitchen. So as you can see here I have got a few things on my counter. Um, I have my favorite kakigori machine which has served me well over the many years since I bought it. If you missed my review on this particular device, make sure to check the link in the description so you can hear all about it. So kakigori, if you didn't know, is shaved ice and the Japanese way of making shaved ice is a little bit different from the Hawaiian style, um, also different from the American style and different from the, I guess, Korean style and Indonesian style and various other styles of shaved ice, which you may have tried before. One of the reasons why I really enjoy making this at home is one, it's super easy to do. Two, it tastes delicious. Three, it reminds me of my time in Japan, especially during the summer. So if you've ever traveled to Japan before, as you may know, it's very difficult to find certain things out of season. So shaved ice is one of those things that you're only gonna find in most places during the summertime or the hotter times of the year. Outside of those times, you might be very hard pressed to find it. You may find it if you're lucky. And because I love warm weather and I love traveling, I spent a lot of time in Japan during the summer months eating and enjoying kakigori. So whenever I make this at home, it brings me back to those fun times. So natsukashi na, natsukashi. So here I have a bowl, which we're gonna be using to collect uh, some of the shaved ice here. I think I, think I did a, uh, this is, I think this is green tea. So I, I'm doing some different uh, variations on shaved ice here. I think this is green tea soy, soy green tea latte. So we're not just using regular um, milk or regular water. I froze some blocks of other types of liquids, which is one of the things that I was going to get into today. Question of the day, if you were to make shaved ice at home, would you be sweetening it with a little bit of strawberry syrup or matcha syrup? Let me know in the comments with a strawberry or matcha right now. All right, so here on the stove, you may see, if you can see here, I've got some strawberry syrup, which has been freshly made. I think it's a little bit warm. So we're gonna allow it to cool just for a little bit longer. Um, and in the meantime, we can go ahead and get our blocks started and shaved. So it's kind of hot today, so I'm looking forward to enjoying this. So regardless, if you're new to shaved ice, making it at home as long, along with the syrups and the other ingredients that we're gonna be using today, or if you have your own machine already and you're a veteran at making shaved ice, maybe you can share some of your tips with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear uh, your thoughts. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this uh, soy latte. This is a green tea soy latte. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this out here. So you can see the color is a little bit different. It's got some tea in there as well. Here we go. All right, there's our first little batch. This is a soy uh, matcha latte in shaved ice form. And uh, since we don't want this to melt while we're talking, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the freezer temporarily while we finish up a few of my tips that I wanted to share with you as far as making your kakigori or Japanese style shaved ice a delicious success at home. So the first is gonna be to use different types of liquids. As you can see today, we did not just use a straight block of ice or water. Um, we used a soy uh, matcha latte. So soy milk with 
a little bit of matcha powder um, in latte form, but frozen. So that's the uh, first thing is to try an experiment. You can actually use tea. So here, this is just straight green tea. Um, we also have my box of ice. So whenever I um, am in the mood for shaved ice, I usually make a bunch of blocks and uh, freeze them. Um, that way I don't have to wait for the next block to freeze. So that was my second tip of the day is if you're going to be making a lot of different servings for a bunch of people, maybe you're having a potluck or a house party, whatever, uh, or it's just really hot and you want to treat yourself, uh, make a block, take it out, put it into a Ziploc and store it in the fridge or the freezer so that it's ready um, when you want. And you can see here, this is just a block of straight soy milk. So experiment with different liquids. Teas work well. Um, milk and soy milk also work. So let me know what you think if you give those a try. So it gives you a little bit of a different look, a different flavor, and even a different texture as well. So always fun to try new things, isn't it? Oh yeah. So the third tip for making your Japanese shaved ice or kakigori a delicious success is to use Japanese syrup. I know it may not be easy uh, or possible for some of you to find it, but if you can't find it on Amazon, I'll link some in the description below. Um, these are actually purchased from amazon.co.jp, so the Japanese version of Amazon, which you, if you didn't know, you can actually order from Japan using that website and ship it to the US. It's going to cost a little bit more, of course, um, but you may be able to order these uh, if you don't find them on the regular sites or at your local Japanese supermarket. Um, these actually had, along with the machine, um, delivered in Japan, and then my dad brought it over once he was on a uh, business trip. So that's how I got these. Um, so you may not be able to find these, but Captain is a Japanese brand that I would recommend. They have a bunch of fruit, um, matcha syrup, other types of syrup that'll give you that Japanese flavor that you're looking for. So the fourth tip, even better than these Japanese syrups, is to make your own, your own sweeteners or your syrups. So here I have an assortment of four. I also have my own homemade strawberry syrup, which we use, we're going to be using in just a little bit. So um, as far as your sweeteners, you can make a variety of different things. Uh, some of my favorites include here, we have our matcha mitz, which is a matcha syrup made with matcha powder, water, and sugar. Um, here we have kuromits, which is made with Okinawan black sugar, water, and that's it. And then here we have not homemade condensed milk, but if you know about condensed milk, it's very simple to make. All you need is regular milk and sugar and some time on the stove to condense it. Um, here we have some amakoji puree. So this is a brown rice amakoji, which is a sweet koji or komekoji, which is a fermented rice product. Basically, I added the komekoji, which is uh, inoculated or activated uh, rice, um, a little bit of water and some brown rice, and I fermented that for about 12 to 14 hours. I don't remember how long I did this batch. Um, but then I pureed it after it finished, and it gives you this nice little uh, puree. It's almost like condensed milk. And this is actually the base with which you can use to make amazake. Amazake is a sweet, non-alcoholic Japanese beverage that is delicious any time of year. And you can have it cold in the summertime or hot in the wintertime. All you need to do is add a little bit of water to your amakoji puree and mix it and you have instant amazake. So hope you guys get a chance to try that someday. It's got a very unique flavor and tastes delicious. And then here, what I have in my hand is some nerigoma paste. So this is kuro nerigoma, which is black kurogoma nerigoma. Uh, this is uh, black sesame, as you can tell. Um, I added a little bit of simple syrup, so it has been a little bit softened by that texture. It's a, little, it's a lot more, I guess, thick and unspreadable, but if you add a little bit of simple syrup to dilute it, it's a great way to enjoy your uh, breakfast toast, your waffles, pancakes, any of those kinds of things, crepes even, which is what I use this for. And uh, you can also use this to sweeten your kakigori, maybe even some vanilla ice cream. It's good stuff. So <clears throat> if we're gonna be using this for kakigori, I'm probably gonna wanna thin it out just a little bit. Fifth tip is gonna to be to use fresh fruit. So today our fresh fruit, well, it's not as fresh as it was before, but these are uh, summer strawberries. Basically I uh, cook them down, I cut them and chop them, and then I pureed them in the pot with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of water and some salt. And then I added a little bit of uh, amakoji in there to make it a little bit uh, unique in flavor. So other strawberry, other things like uh, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, 
Um, whatever summer fruit you have that may go well with the sweeteners that you're using can make a nice addition for uh, your kakigori. So not only in terms of the texture, but the flavor and the presentation as well. And if you don't have fresh fruit, the fifth tip is gonna be to add other Japanese, I guess, toppings, if you will. So some things that you can add to your Japanese style kakigori include anko, which is red bean paste. You can also use kanten, which is the, uh, it's kind of like jello, but it's a little bit more firm in texture and you can make it with a variety of different things like tea, milk, and uh, other, other tasty things. It's a nice way to make your kakigori a little bit uh, more adventurous, I guess, and complex in flavor and texture. Uh, you can also add shiratama, which are those little white balls, which you might have seen. You can also make those with matcha or hojicha to make uh, other variations of those little balls. Um, you can add in ice cream, of course, whipped cream, soft cream, which if you have, a, if you're fortunate to have a soft serve. Uh, ice cream machine at home, that would be awesome. I haven't really found a good one worth buying, so I don't have one of those yet. But if you do know of one, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll go and try it out. I love soft serve. The last thing that I have for you for enjoying your kakigori, this is very important by the way, I think it's very important, last but not least of course, is to use a very small spoon. So this is like a half teaspoon. You could use a quarter of a teaspoon or just like a really small bamboo spoon like this, but these are a little bit on the bigger side. These are probably about a teaspoon. Um, I think this is probably like a quarter of a teaspoon or less because it doesn't really have much of a little indent there. And the reason that I say use a small spoon is because it's gonna force you to have small scoops and many of them. So not only are you gonna be able to enjoy your kakigori longer but you're going to be able to enjoy it more often because you're only taking just little tiny bites cheap pocket just a very small 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 tiny bite and uh, it's going to stretch out longer provided that it doesn't melt so if you find that your kakigori is melting i think that's a problem you might eat it a little bit quicker but i think in terms of uh, enjoying it using a little little spoon versus a giant spoon like this is going to be a little bit of a better experience overall for you as you enjoy not only the kakigori but any kind of Japanese dessert. So if you disagree that's totally fine but let me know what you think in the comments. If you agree, small spoon, big spoon. I'm a small spoon guy. So and the other reason I say that is because if you've ever been to Japan and you've gone to one of those dessert cafes or just a regular cafe and ordered a dessert, you're not going to get a giant spoon like this. It's too big. You're always going to get a small spoon. So perhaps there's a reason that they do that. So all of those things I think will definitely help to make your Japanese style shaved ice or kakigori a delicious success. So here's how this uh, strawberry syrup looks. This is about one pound of strawberries uh, and about a half cup of sugar, three quarters cup of water, and a couple tablespoons of amakoji. So I'm just reducing it until it's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit watery still. But to finish up, we can go ahead and do our last bowl here. Oh shoot, I forgot to take out the remaining disc. So there's always a little bit of a disc left over here. I usually feed it to my plants. You can always recycle if you want. Maybe I'll eat it after we're done. And since that last one was this uh, soy milk latte, we'll go ahead and do this one as a regular kakigori with ice and shinpai suru na. Do not worry. I have everything under control. Okay, so here's our next block. And then I think we'll top this off with some of the strawberry syrup. Should be cooled by now. And we'll do the amakoji. And then maybe some of the matcha as well. So three different flavors to have uh, fun with today. And yes, this is way easier than doing it by hand. I remember when I was growing up as a kid, 
My mom had one of those manual ones uh, from Japan. I think it was her, her mom, so it was my grandmother's, and then I got to use it when I was growing up. It's a lot of work if you've never done shaved ice by hand. So if you get one of these electric ones, you can appreciate uh, how little work it is. All you gotta do is freeze the blocks and then pull the lever, and then the electricity does all the work for you. How about that? Something to be grateful for, maybe? Got it? Tip number eight I just remembered is to put your freezer on deep freeze. If you have that setting on your freezer, it's gonna make your ice blocks a little bit colder and hold their shape a lot better. So as you can see here, they're still intact. I'm just gonna shape this up into a little bit more of a mound. And we'll start off with the amakoji. This is very sweet, very fermenty. If you like fermented things that are sweet, this might be right up your alley, waiting for you to discover and enjoy it. And if you don't, maybe you can try shiokoji, the salty version. Okay, so there's that. And I guess we can do some of the strawberry next. You know, we'll just leave it at those two for now. And then we can do the other matcha latte with the matcha meats. And uh, yeah, we'll just do it with the matcha meats. So here's the other one right here. This is a matcha soy latte. We're gonna be doing a little topping of matcha meats, which is sweet matcha syrup. So we covered a bunch of different things today, very important here, and hopefully you got something uh, out of this video. Let me know if you enjoyed it by giving me a thumbs up. Share this video with a friend or a loved one if you did, because maybe they will get value out of it as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe now so you don't miss any of my future Japanese cooking videos, especially the ones that are part of this brand new series on omatsuri, Japanese festivals, and the foods that you would encounter if you were going to be visiting one in Japan, perhaps on your next trip. Only you don't have to wait until then because you'll be learning how to do it at home. Just like this. Almost forgot. Always make sure to serve your kakigori with a little bit of Japanese tea, specifically green tea, hojicha, maybe even matcha. Iced in the summertime, of course.